Hello, my name is Pastor Julie, and I'm the junior high pastor at New Vision Church. We have a special three-week video series where we'll be answering questions that you, our junior high students, have asked. So let's get right into it. The first question one of you asked me is if the Bible tells us to put God first and not worry about anything else, should we still worry about school and work? How should we prioritize or balance school work with putting God first? You know, first of all, I just want to thank whoever sent this question to me because this is a great question, not just for junior hires, but also for high schoolers, for college students, for adults, for everyone, because we all worry. You know, so we have to ask ourselves, should we worry? What does even the word worry mean? Uh, Matthew 6, 24, 34, Jesus explains or uh, commands that we should not worry. The word or the phrase, do not worry, in Greek, in the original Greek language, do not worry, the word, the Greek word is merim now, which literally means a distracted mind, a divided mind. So in other words, it is a mind that is divided from focusing on God and his kingdom and on the thing that you're being worried about. So when Jesus is saying, do not worry, he's revealing two truths to us. The first truth is that as Christians, we will be tempted to worry. We will be tempted to be anxious. You know, if being a Christian guarantees that we will be worry-free, that we will be stress-free, then Jesus would have never written about this section about do not worry. If anything, he would have said, when you're, when you're a follower of mine, then you will never worry in your life. But no, Jesus says in Matthew 6, do not worry. So Christians, we must face this truth first. We must embrace this truth first, that we will face with worries that Jesus is, is telling us that we will not that we should not worry and the best thing about that is that Jesus gives us uh, a solution to that it gives us instructions on what should we do if we're not going to worry the scripture is saying in Matthew 6 that because God is our master who provides for us all the things we need to live we ought to instead of focusing on the thing that we're worrying about focus on God you know, a good example is this. You know, when you're biking with your friends, where do you look in order to not veer off course? Right? You look ahead. You look forward. You don't look at your phone. You don't look at your friends. You don't look down as you're biking. Don't do that. You're going to fall. Um, but you look ahead to make sure that you're in the right direction. For some encouragement, I want to give you these four powerful words to you. And these four words are, you have a choice. You have a choice. You have a choice to either choose to focus on God, choose to set your eyes on God and look to Him, or you have a choice to focus on the thing you're worried about, to focus on the thing that you're stressed about. You, know? you have a choice. So encouragement, Christian. I want to encourage you to choose to focus on God. For you to move closer to God, for you to trust in God, we need to first set our eyes on God. Now, there are multiple ways we can focus on God practically. And I want to give you three things you can try, and I will call them the three Ps. The first P is prioritize your time with God. Make time for God. Like, And then when I say make time for God, I meant make a specific time with God. I think many times we say, oh, I will spend more time with God in the morning or I will do it when I go to bed or before I go to bed. But sometimes when, we, when it's so vague, we don't really, our mind is not really prepared to spend time with God. So I want to encourage you, set a specific time where you're going to have uninterrupted time with Him. It's, it could be like 7 a.m. At 7 a.m. to 8 a.m., you're going to spend uninterrupted time with God or 4 p.m. or at 10 p.m. I highly advise you, 
to set a specific time. So when that time hits, when 7 a.m. hits or when 10 p.m. hits, you know that you are going to spend time with God. And furthermore, I want to encourage you to remove any distractions that will, that will distract you from God. So if you have to move your phone away just for an hour or move your pets away or move the computer away, move somewhere where there's nothing that will hinder you and distract you from your time with God because you are prioritizing your time with Him. So first, prioritize your time with God. Second, pray pray philippians 4 6 says that when we worry instead of choosing to worry choose to pray instead of just drowning in our worry thoughts bring your worry thoughts to god christian understand that jesus died on the cross for your sins so that in this new life that we have, we have this intimate relationship, this access to talk to God and for Him to talk to us. So let's make the most of this relationship that Jesus has gifted unto us. Talk to God. And the last P is people of God. Surround yourself. Reach out to people who will encourage you to prioritize your time with God. Surround yourself with people who care for your faith, who care for your soul, and, and will pray for you. You know, there have, you know, honestly for me, there has been a lot of worries in my life recently. And thankfully, God has provided me, people of God, His people, um, these wonderful friends of mine who care for my faith, who care for my soul, who have been praying for me every night, every day. Find yourself some prayer warriors or other Christians who will pray for you. The second question is very interesting. This person asked, is it okay to get a Discord account? Now, this is very interesting because, now for those who don't know, Discord is a gaming, primarily a gaming chatting platform. But this question is interesting because it can relate to a lot of social media accounts. So I want, to, I want to even ask, is it okay to even get a TikTok account? Is it okay to get an Instagram account or a Facebook account? Are these things okay for me? When I first read this question, the first passage that comes to mind is 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 23 to 31. And I'll read, this, I'll read the first few verses quickly. All things are lawful, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful, but not all things build up. Let no one seek his own good, but the good of his neighbor. So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Amen. This passage brings two truths. And the first truth is that all things are allowed. That's pretty crazy right like all things things like money friends food games and yes even social media accounts they are allowed they are permitted they are in itself not evil they are harmless they are fine as long as it doesn't harm you physically it doesn't doesn't harm you mentally they're perfectly fine but scripture also says that even though all these things are allowed not all things are helpful not all things are meant to, to build you up now for example i had a student who was really really addicted to gaming and while he games he's the most typical toxic player that i would know that while he games he will get angry at the other player especially if they're not doing their part that he is the one carrying the team and he'll get so angry at them he'll get, even get angry at me when we play he'll get angry at um at his parents who tell him that he's playing the games too much to the point where he's like lashing out on them and I can hear it in, 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 the, in the chat and he will even say that when he goes to school he's thinking about gaming when he goes to bed he's thinking about gaming now for many of us we don't have that kind of gaming addiction like for some of us when we play games we don't get angry we don't really think about games all the time because it's just a game doesn't hurt us, doesn't harm us. But people like my student, gaming causes him to hurt others, 
gaming causes him to hurt his faith because his entire world now is revolved around this game. That his thoughts, everything he does is for this game. Thankfully, he took a break from gaming and just so that he knew that it's harming him and harming others. And again, it's not because the game itself was evil. The game was, itself was perfectly fine. There's many people who play these games and are perfectly healthy and fine. But it's because he knew himself that when he games, it brings him away from God. So even though all things are allowed, not all things are helpful. So that's the first truth. The second truth is that everything we do must glorify God. Everything we do must glorify God. So whoever asks this question, is it okay to get a Discord account? Or if you are wondering, is it okay for me to get a TikTok account or for me to get an Instagram account? I want to challenge you with these two questions. Before you even think about making an account first, I want you to ask these two questions yourself first. The first question is, is it helpful? Will getting this account encourage your faith? Is, will, will getting this account encourage you to be more like Christ, to have your identity uh, centered in Christ? Is it helpful? The second question is, will it build up? Will getting this account help you connect with the church, help edify the church? All in all, guys, when it comes down to it, the question we have to really ask is, will getting this account, will doing this, will it glorify God? Will having a Discord account help you in your faith and connecting with the church? You know, will spending all those time on TikTok, will that help you get closer to God? Or will spending more time on Instagram, will that make you feel more insecure about your looks? Will spending more time on TikTok and talking with your friends virtually, will that rob you of your time to spend time with God and His people? So I want to encourage you guys, be very self-aware of your actions that when others tell you, like your parents or friends, when they tell you something like, you know, hey, I noticed that you've been spending a lot of time on TikTok to the point where maybe your studies are affected, to the point maybe you're not taking care of your mental health, to the point where you're, you're becoming more angrier or more impatient through this, then before you lash out on them and blame them, stop for a second and kind of retract and think back because maybe this account that you made, maybe the social media that you're in and immersed in, maybe it's not healthy for you. Maybe it's not even helping you. Maybe it's actually bringing you away from God. So Christian, for your question about is it okay to get a Discord account, if your faith is important, I want you to first think about is this Discord account, is it going to help my faith or is it going to bring me away from my faith in God? Or is it and, and is it going to uh, hurt my mental health? Like, and will this account help me build up the church? Remember, all the things that we do, whatever we do, we must bring glory to God. Seventh grade, Luke June. Ask this last question of the day. Are there any good ways to always keep God in your mind throughout the day? Great question, Luke. And for this one, I would like to invite a colleague of mine to share his insight. His name is David Kim from Westgate Church, and he's the discipleship pastor there. And, you know, personally in my life, he has given me such great wisdom in my spirit ministry journey, encouraged me in so many ways. So let's hear his response for your question. Pastor David, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, I'm so um, you know, excited and grateful that you um, are here to just participate and to volunteer your time to sh share your insight and wisdom upon this question. So uh, and you, you heard the question um, and just reiterate, the question is like, what are some great ways, good ways to always keep God in your mind throughout the day? I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Yeah. Well, hello, New Vision family. Uh, once again, I'm David, and 
Um, great question. I mean, and since I'm a pastor, everybody's nervous because they all kind of, you guys are all wondering, oh, he's going to give the typical pastor answer, which is read the Bible and pray. And, and absolutely. I mean, uh, I mean, there's no shortcuts to that. There's no other answers to that. We know as followers of Jesus to uh, continue to put God into the center of everything that we do. Certainly prayer and scripture reading as, is as central and most essential thing we can do. But one of the things that I can, um, maybe that could help practically is this. Uh, I mean, we're not gonna be during quarantine, including myself, we're not gonna be spending all of our days praying and reading the Bible, let's be just be honest. And so here's a question that might help. Uh, and the question is this, where is God? And, and this question has helped me a lot. So what I mean by this, when you are watching the news about quarantine, different things, the question you should be asking is where is God in this? And that's gonna help to kind of move from just the news information to hmm, what God might be doing, where is God? Or as you're watching a TV show on a certain topic, you know, and, and then as a family, maybe you're watching a movie together on a certain topic, and then you pause and say, you know what, where is God in this show? Where is God in this scene here? I was just watching a movie on like on on helping other people uh, get out of jail, right? And and just watching that show, you could just say, oh, I watched a fun show about uh, you know certain people helping these folks out of jail. But to pause and say, hmm, where is God in in this situation? Where is God in justice? Where is God in helping people who are who are, uh, uh, you know, in need, right? And so whether you're eating, whether you're watching a movie, or whether you're stuck and, and, and in, in, in conversations with your friends, to pause and ask this question, where is God, might be a real good way to frame everything around you towards God. Does that make sense? Yeah, and I think that's such a great starting point to begin with that question in our lives, in our day to day, and even what we see on news and coverage, where is God in all this? Um, I like to ask if you can give like a, um, I know you gave an example of like even watching a read, a, watching that coverage of uh, of the people in jail. But is there like what in in your personal life, Pastor David? Uh, can you uh, kind of give a kind of an example of how to how you go about with that question? How you yeah, go about absolutely. in your day to day? Um, as everyone, uh, pretty much all over the world, we're in shelter in place. And so I am, you know, I, as a pastor, I'm stuck at home and I am getting antsy and, and I have two little girls whom I love and my beautiful wife. Uh, but uh, at the same time, when we are, you know, with anybody who are close 24 seven, you start getting a little bit frustrated and annoyed at one another and you start to hit each other's nerves. And at that, at that time, what you can do is you can just bicker and fight and get upset and blame one another, which I've done, uh, just pure confession. Um, but also to pause and say, where is God? What is God trying to do here? What is God inviting me to? And maybe for me in this season, God is saying, you know, God, what, where are you? And what, what might you be up to in this season for me? And God is saying, David, I want you to slow down and spend some time, more time with with your wife and your family, David, I'm gifting you this season to not miss out on your children's development. You know, that you are part of, you're not just a discipleship pastor at Westgate Church. Your primary responsibility is to disciple your children. And so mm -hmm. I'm, I'm reading more stories with them. I'm talking to them about Jesus and I'm creating more opportunities. And so in this season, while I'm at work at church, I'm spending a lot of time with my children and helping them navigate uh, what this world looks like. And so I've been asking that question and every day I'm learning new ways of God inviting me into that process. Wow, I think that's such an encouraging thing to hear. Thank you so much for sharing just a little bit about your, just your life to us. I think this is also encouragement to our parents who may be watching this right now about even being mindful of our roles at home. So thank you so much for that. Uh, Pastor David, before we close, like to ask if you have any encouraging words to share with us, uh, especially during this uh, quarantine time for uh, to our church? Yeah, um, and let me just, uh, I guess, answer that question. Where is God? God is with us, mm -hmm. and God is active and involved in not only just the global pandemic, but every kind of uh, uh, decision of your life. And so, 
um, as you sense God kind of nudging your spirit to pause and say, God, I know you are speaking. I know you're with me. I know you're in this family. I know you're in my room. God, uh, help me to pay attention to you and, and, and be involved with what you might be inviting me to and that I would not miss out on your beautiful presence in this season. And so God, I just want to encourage you saying that God is with you. God is speaking to you and God is beautiful in your life. I track by so much that's happening in this world to not lose God's beautiful invitation into your life in this season. Well, thank you again, Pastor David. And um, like, thank you again for your wonderful wisdom. And um, yeah, and hopefully uh, Luke and whoever, and then all those who had this question as well, hopefully this has encouraged you. Thank you so much, Pastor David. Yes. See you guys. Take care.